and that was over 2,550. Did you hear that thunder? Hello everybody, my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very, very nerdy with my July wrap up. Regardless of how many vlogs I did last month, I still had just a, a kind of below average month as far as like the number. Now the readings themselves are pretty good. Um, I had uh, some some really good reads this month actually and then some okay months so it was really just kind of like a, a mixed month. This month we read 10 books so hopefully we'll be here forever. I will link all of the vlogs down below and up above if you'd like to check out my in-depth thoughts on those. But let's just dive into the stats. It is thundering outside even though it is bright, so I don't know what's going on, but we're going to try to squeeze this video in. So in the month of July, like I mentioned, I read 10 books and that was over 2,556 pages and about 74 hours-ish listened to. And that was over four audiobooks, two physical books, and four mixed books. My age category was relatively the same this month. We had one middle grade, one YA book, and eight adult books. Genres were pretty spread out actually this month. We had three romance, two sci-fi, two fantasy, one mystery, one nonfiction, and one contemporary. And ratings were relatively normal-ish for me. We had three five stars, six four stars, and one DNF. So the first book that I read was actually kind of like a continuation from the past month, and that is The Beast by Katie Robert, which is the fourth in the Wicked Villains series. This is a series that I have been buddy reading with my friend Taylor. She has read all, I think, but the last one. Um, and I haven't read any, so it's been fun to dive in. So I ended up giving this one four stars. This is one that I think might have suffered from me being in like a slump burnout kind of thing. Uh, but regardless of that, I still really enjoyed it. The character development in this book between all three of our main characters is the best that I have seen in this series. So if you couldn't guess it by the name, this one is kind of the Beauty and the Beast retelling of sorts from this series. We follow Belle, Beast, and Gaetan, and it's the three of them figuring out their relationship. Um, and they've had kind of a past. Gaetan has played a big role, especially in the last book, and so we see them in kind of their own little area. We know that they've had some past, we see that, but it's a lot of character development between these three characters. It's a lot of staying in one place as well. So if you like a book that like basically takes place in like the same location the whole time. This would be one that you would enjoy. Uh, not my favorite in the series. I still think that A Worthy Opponent is my favorite, which I believe was the third one, but I still really enjoyed the like chemistry between all of our characters. Like I said, the character development between all of them was immaculate, um, and it just... there was a lot of aspects to this that I was surprised that I enjoyed. Um, so, it's been a while since I read this one, so I don't have like a whole lot of thoughts on it, but generally my thoughts are overall really good. The ending did feel rushed, like not in a sense of like the author's like, I really need to wrap this up, but in the sense of like the relationship itself moved really quickly. And like I felt like the, the author wasn't trying to wrap it up, but it felt like she was trying to take the next step for our characters that like they didn't need to take the next step for yet. Like they, they needed some time. I don't know, like it wasn't even like if it was the epilogue, then like maybe that would have made sense. But like I don't even think it was the epilogue. I think it was just like the end of the book. I don't know. It felt very rushed. Um, so beyond that, I still really enjoyed it. Like there's not really a whole lot I can say at this point that I haven't said already about her books, but I'm excited to see where we go because we've seen some hints to the next few couples and I am interested to see how those are going to play out in the grand scheme of things. But generally just kind of, I feel like I don't have any strong feelings about it. I enjoyed the characters, but it just like wasn't anything spectacular, I guess. All right, the next three books that I'm going to talk about were all from my most recent Booktube Made Me series, uh, which I did G from Book Roast. Loved that. Also, she commented on my video and I was like, oh my gosh, my life is made. Um, so go check that out again, linked above down below if you want to see my in-depth thoughts on all of those because this is going to be very surface level, I guess. Uh, but the first one that I picked up was the first volume of Descender and this is by Jeff Lemire and Dustin. Oh no, I always can never figure out how to pronounce his name. Nguyen, I think, baby. 
Um, this is a sci-fi graphic novel. And this is the first in like, I believe there are, well, they're in front of me, six volumes. Um, and so I didn't really know what to expect with this one, but I adored it. So in this book, it takes place kind of in a sci-fi world. And we follow our main character right here. His name is Tim21. He's part of a series of robots that were created basically to be the companions to young kids. So they are like the friends of these kids. And so he is sent to a planet and he becomes really close with this kid and his mother. And so like the kid it kind of becomes his brother, the mom kind of becomes his mom as well, and then when the kid goes to sleep at night, the mom kind of turns him off, and so like he goes to sleep as well. So one night this happens, and then he's never he never wakes up until like 10 years later, and it, everyone on this planet is dead, and so it takes place after these like huge robot wars, and so there's these big, um, huge like death machines. I can't remember what they're called. Hold on harvesters. So they're calling them the harvesters. And the guy that created these Tim 21 bots, he, there's a code that Tim has that is similar to the code in these big bots. And so like a bunch of people basically get the guy who created this and they go on this adventure to find Tim and kind of like figure out what's going on. So this is the very first volume and I adored it. I don't know if it's because it gave me like saga vibes in the sense of like it was a sci-fi novella or not novella graphic novel like there's not really anything specific about saga and this that are related but it is a sci-fi graphic novel and I think that's what did it and it just kind of gave me those like vibes that I loved when I was reading saga and I don't know what it was but I just fell in love with these characters I ended up giving this one five stars I have now since bought the entire series <laughs> because I'm obsessed and just like the cast of characters in the back is so eclectic. We've got humans, we've got robots, we've got blue individuals. I don't even know what they are. There's a bunch of crazy people. Um, and there's just a lot about this that I love. There's some quirky like side characters. Like there's a dog bot that like is his best friend and is so cute. And then there's this big guy called like Driller and his whole job is like to drill into the ground. And so like he kind of protects Tim and it's so cute and I just loved everything about it. So um, I, and I can't quite put my finger on why this worked so well for me, but it did. And I just want to keep reading and I just need to know what's going on with this series. Um, so I adored this. <laughs> Moral of the story is this was great. And now I'm obsessed with the series and I must read all of them. On the shoes of that great book, I had another great book, which is by far my favorite of the month. And that is The No Show by Beth O'Leary. So this book took my mind and twisted it in about five different directions. And I loved every second of it. So it follows our main guy who's named Joseph Carter. Um, and the book is basically following him and these three different women. And they all get stood up on Valentine's Day by him. And so it's the respective stories of all of them. Now it's told from all three of these women's perspectives. So we have Siobhan, we've got Jane, and we've got Miranda. Um, and just learning about these women, first off, do yourself a favor and get the audiobook because it was top-notch stellar. Um, it has all three, like three different female narrators, as well as a male narrator. I think the very last yeah, the epilogue is in Joseph's perspective. Um, so there is a male narrator at the very, very end. And if you are a fan like I am, the one who plays Siobhan is Ivana Lynch, who was one, I love that actress so much. Anyway, like they just, they just did so well. The, the moral of the story is they did well and you would do yourself a favor if you got them. They read this so well. I fell in love with every single character in here and there was a twist in the story that like, I knew there had to be something coming, but I wasn't sure what it was. And this story, it took the story on a whole new level. It like made me cry, it made me laugh, it made me happy. Like it I had all the feelings. I really just had all the feelings. So now I wanna read everything by this author uh, because she reminds me a lot of Emily Henry in the sense of like, you have a really lovely, beautiful romance story, but you also have like something else under the surface that's a little bit more harder hitting. So if you're not someone who's like, give me all the fluffy feels, but you want a little more, I keep saying substance, but like you guys know what you, what I mean, like a little more to your story, then this is probably an author for you. I've only read this book, so I can't like say for sure. But seriously, I am obsessed with this story. I want everyone to read it. And I just, I loved it. I loved every second of it. Um, and like going into it, you expect, you expect it to be like this super awful story about these three women who get cheated on. And it's not that. It's something totally different. It's something much bigger than that. And I, 
Uh, I just love it. I love it so freaking much. Anyway, um, yes, do yourself a favor. Please read a book. It got five stars, if it wasn't obvious. Um, I'm obsessed. I'm, I am obsessed. And then the last book that I read for that vlog was Dark Matter. Um, and that's by Blake Crouch. This is one that is def it's so sci-fi. Um, but we follow our main character and he basically like has a family, he's got a kid, he's got a wife, he's kind of happy. Um, and he's always kind of questioned his life because they did make a choice. Um, they had their kid and so and because of that they got married and they like started this life and he's very happy with his family but if he hadn't have done that then he would have gone down this totally different kind of rabbit hole and he would have been like the super successful like science engineering kind of guy but he doesn't do that he decides to have family and so it follows him and he wakes up after some things happened at the beginning of the book and his family is gone. Not in the sense of like his family was taken, in the sense of like they don't exist. And so he has to like figure out what's going on. So first off, this book is way too smart for me. <laughs> and I don't know if it's because I missed like a couple of paragraphs here and then that really explained everything, but the science aspects of this book are trippy beyond belief. But it's not in the sense of like you can't understand what's happening. It's in a sense of like it's it's next level. There's maybe some things you kind of have to like let let the things happen. Um if you're very logic brained, you probably won't enjoy this book because like while this is very similar in my opinion to like the Marvel movies where like these fantastical things are happening. There are gods, they've got powers, all of the stuff, but it's all rooted in science. That's what this book is like. It's like things are happening and you're like, there is no way this is happening, but everything is rooted back to science. And so it feels very realistic because of that. I loved our main character. This is not an easy book to read by any stretch of the imagination. There's a lot of stuff that goes on. It's This is good for if you like want that very trippy sci-fi thriller feel. Like this is perfect for that. But also go in expecting your brain to be a little broken because like things happened and I was like what is going on and I, every time I think I've made it to like the peak climax of the story something else gets added onto the top and I'm like how are we here? Um, especially the end. Like I was good until about the last 25% of the story and I was like what have we gotten into? This just took a turn. And so in a good way. Like, I still really enjoyed it, but it's very, very trippy. Very kind of, like, all over the place. So if you like more complex stories, this is probably for you. Um, if you like those kinds of sci-fi thrillers where you're like, what is going on? This is also for you. I very much enjoyed it, weirdly enough. Everything I'm saying I feel like shouldn't have worked for me, but it did, and I don't really know why. Because, <laughs> um, like, I don't feel like his writing was anything spectacular either. I felt like his story development maybe is what captured me. But um, you also feel for him, you feel for, you know, his story and his family and it's just super cute. So yeah, do I want to own it? No, I'm happy that I like, I didn't actually pick up a copy of this, but I still really enjoyed it. And I will definitely give this author some more chances because I, I like, I don't really know what he did, but I enjoyed all of it. The next couple of books are kind of filling in those nonfiction middle grade things that I want to do every single month because like I was slumping slash burnout hard at this point and I just didn't feel like I could commit to anything. So I found a couple things on Audible that were like only a couple of hours and so that is what we put in for these because it just, this middle of the month was hard for me. I like, I just couldn't find anything I wanted. Uh, so the first thing that I picked up is a Audible original that's part of a series that I have really really enjoyed and it's called Spies. Um, and it's part of the Rivals series. This is the third one in the series. They've done one on Rivals, they've done one on Pirates, and it's basically just like telling about, probably about four every time uh, stories from history but in a very interesting way. It's a full cast recording um, and it's literally just telling stories from history but in a very interesting way. Uh, so this one as the title says, it's about spies. But what I really enjoyed about this is that it kind of like took stories that we don't know, like stories that are maybe really popular, but we don't actually know really what's going on. Um, so a lot of these are stories about slaves. A lot of these are stories about women. So like people that history has kind of forgotten, this is where they've come in and said, hello, let's not forget them. So I really enjoyed that. The first one specifically, because like it follows um, Hercules Mulligan, which was about the time of like Hamilton. If you're like a fan of the Hamilton musical, you probably know, but he was a spy. So the story 
like his specifically sticks out to me but like because his story is one that I think we know that like he was part of like the spy network a little bit but it wasn't him it was one of his slaves that like actually did all of the scary stuff and like went behind enemy lines and actually like help spread the information and so like he's the one who deserves all the credit not necessarily this guy and so it's stories like that where like someone gets all the credit but it's actually somebody else and I found that really interesting and these are all stories like he's the only one like name wise that I recognize the rest of them I hadn't even recognized remotely but it's so great because again full cast recording you've got sound effects you've got people being sassy about history and how they don't keep good records and it's just little things like that that made this so enjoyable. So if you have an audible and you like kind of fun couple hour experiences, um, I would check out this series. It's by Scott McCormick, or at least he writes them. Uh, so I highly recommend. I've loved all of them so far. They're so good. Oh, this is the fourth one. I lied. There were two rivals ones and then pirates and now we've got spies. I lied. Oh, I also gave it five stars if that wasn't obvious. And then the other one is another one that is an audible original. And I found it because it's part of a series and it's the kind of like prequel, if you will. And I really enjoyed it. And that was Camp Cacophony and it's part of the Mistwick series. And I read the first one, I think it was last year or the year before. And it's all set in this world where they're like are magical. There is magic, but it's kind of created by music. Um, so everybody who's a magician or someone who has magical powers has an instrument. The types of notes you play and the order they're in all are kind of spells. Um, so the first book in the series is kind of like following our main character who goes to the school. And this one, it's her right before that summer, like the summer before she goes to school, going to a camp about sports. And she is not a sports person. She is not even remotely interested in anything sports. All she wants to do is practice her flute for the audition to get into the school. And so... Her grandma kind of like convinces her to like go at this camp and the camp's all about not having music. It's all about physical exercise and stuff like that. Um, but then all these strange things start occurring and like all these spells start happening. And so it's her and one of her friends that she met there kind of figuring out what's going on. So it's really cute if you enjoyed the first one. I feel like you don't, it wouldn't make, I mean, it does make sense chronologically to read it before the first one, but it didn't come out until recently. So like you wouldn't have had it going into the first one. And I feel like reading the first one and then reading the prequel, you can enjoy it a lot more because you kind of know what it's being led up to. So I really enjoyed it. I ended up giving this one four and a half stars. There's nothing like specific and spectacular about this book, but I think I enjoyed it so much because I had already read the first one. And I really like this world and like the magic system about like being a part of music is really fascinating to me. I really enjoyed it. It's kind of like a fun little middle grade if you like, you know, going, if it was, what is it, like a school setting and things like that. I think you would enjoy the original one. Again, I think you kind of need to read the first one before this one, not because it spoils anything, just because I feel like it, it gives you that extra level of like appreciation. But I really enjoyed it. It was a nice little fun couple hour audiobook that I could like squeeze in. The next four are all part of my second vlog that I did which was the cover by vlog. So again leave it down below and linked above but basically it was I went to the store picked out books based on the cover knowing nothing about them and reading them to see how I did. The consensus is not terribly. So the first one I picked up was The Siren of Sussex. This is by Mimi Matthews. This is actually the first in the series and I didn't realize that. There's one more coming. Actually, there's going to be, I think, four total. So this one is awesome. It's part of the Bells of London series, and I picked it up for this beautiful cover. So basically, in this, we follow Evelyn, who is determined to get married because of circumstances that she's been put under to, like, kind of take care of her family. And she's like, I'm kind of like a wallflower. I am not going to fit in with people in the dance area, like, where you would normally find a match. But I am amazing at horsemanship and I love riding and that's where I'm going to get, that's where I'm possibly going to like show off who I am. Um, so she discovers that there's this guy out there, well she's not sure who it is at first, um, but there's someone who's making these riding habits for these women and she's like, I love the way it looks, I want that riding habit. So she comes to this shop and it turns out it's this guy named Ahmed um, and he is an Indian, um, or sorry, Indian English, half Indian, Indian, half English. It turns out that he's the one who's been making all these clothes and so she and him strike up this friendship so that like basically she can wear all of these clothes, he'll make her entire outfit, she'll wear all of these fancy clothes and help get his name out there. Um, and because of the close relationship they have, because of, you know, he's making all of her clothes, 
other things, other romantic things happen. Um, I loved this book. I ended up giving this one four and a half stars. I think this is perfect for someone who wants a historical romance without any of the smutty bits. There is hints at the smutty bits, but like there's not any physical smutty bits on the page, if that makes sense. Um, like they talk about how much they like desire each other a lot, but they don't show it, I guess is the best way. So like, I'm not sure if that qualifies as like a clean romance, but it's definitely more clean than a lot of the other things you would expect when you hear historical romance. So I loved this one because A, it was a little bit different than what I expected. B, there was so much talk of fashion, which of course there's going to be with him making her clothes. But like from his perspective, just the way he made clothes, the way he had colors in his brain and how they worked for people, it was just fascinating. I also loved the representation in here because like it's very rare in a historical romance that you see a non-white character. And if you do, it's like very throwaway, moving on with your life. I loved that he was the main character. I loved that a lot of the reactions to him from this time felt very realistic. Like there's a couple of things that happened to move the plot along that I was like, not sure if this actually was set historically, someone would think that about him. But a lot of it was. And I just really enjoy, enjoyed it. I thought it was really good. I definitely am interested in the second book. I love the friendships in this one, which is where we're going to go in the series. Each book's going to probably follow somebody else in this kind of like, I think it's four girl friendship. Um, and I just love it. I love the friendship. I love how like powerful our main character is and how much she knows her worth and she's going to go after what she wants. And how she's not afraid of society and she's gonna make her own way and I just love everything about that. So I adored this book. I thought it I thought it was so good. The next book is the one that I DNF'd and that is This Beauty which is The Vanished Queen and this is by Elizabeth Campbell. I made it about 30% of the way through. I'm not entirely sure what page I was on but I made it about 30% of the way through and I don't know if it was because of my slump burnout or if this book just didn't work but I just there were things that I just, I couldn't do it. Like, I just didn't want to read it. Uh, so this book follows a world where the king is terrifying. All he does is, like, kill people. Everyone is terrified of him. Um, and so all of his sons are just kind of, like, waiting for him to die because they know that the heir is going to be a much better king than he is because he rules by fear. And so we follow a girl who's part of the rebellion, um, and her name is Anza. At the very beginning of the book, she finds this diary that belonged to the queen. Now, the queen's been gone for a long time. It's never said, but, like, basically she vanished, and everyone's like, oh, that means he killed her. And so, like, she finds a diary, but, like, it never comes back. Like, there are chapters in her perspective, and then there's a second perspective, which is one of the princes. And then in between those chapters are bits that I would suspect are from the diary but it's never said it's in the queen's perspective but like it's never said that it's from the diary um and then like i said there is the second perspective which is the prince he's not the heir he's just i think he's the second oldest um and he just is waiting but he's also like trying to give back a little bit so he does like little acts of justice here and there um so that like it makes him feel better and they've met once where i was i think they're going to create an alliance later on in the book but I didn't get that far because A, I did not like the writing. It was very boring. Nothing really happened. My favorite parts were the queen's sections. But also, this book is horrid in the sense of like, the king is the most awful person I have ever read about. And like, I don't, I like to give trigger warnings and I know people can get triggered by a lot of things, but I'm usually not never triggered by anything. But I, it was just so much that I couldn't, like I was like, I don't even wanna read this. So like, if you're interested in this book, Huge trigger warnings for literally everything you could possibly think of. Domestic abuse, sexual assault, possible rape. Like, there is everything wrong with this man. Um, and I was getting very uncomfortable, and I was like, I just can't do this. Also, there are random people mentioned in here. Like, we should know who they are, and we've never met them before. And that was very annoying. So there was just a lot about this book that didn't work for me, and I kind of went back and forth of, do I try to continue, and do I just DNF it? And I was already feeling like I didn't want to read it, and I was afraid this was going to put me in more of a slump than I was already kind of in. So I just said, peace, bye, and we put it down. So I don't know. Will I get back to it at some point? Hesitant, maybe. Um, it's probably going to go downstairs. I might not unhaul it quite yet. But it's, it's making its way out the door. It's, it's, yeah. The next book I read was the first volume of Catch These Hands. And this is by Marata. I ended up giving this one four stars, I think. 
Yes, four stars. This basically follows two high school rivals of sorts who all they did was fight and they meet in the present day. Um, so we've got Take Bay and Saram, S Sora Mori. Take Bay's friends are all kind of like moving on with her li their lives and she's like, oh no, I need to not dress the same as I did in high school. And so they end up be meeting up again. And Sor, Sor I can never get her name right. Sora Mori basically says, hey, um, if I fight you and I win, will you go out with me? And Take Bay's like, okay, fine, whatever. And then like, she punches her in the face and then they start dating. It's really bizarre. Um, there's only four volumes of this, although I think the first two are the only two that are actually translated because I can't seem to find the other two anywhere. But it was like, okay, like there wasn't anything crazy about it. I liked the relationship. I thought it was interesting. Um, I don't think I want to continue with the series unless I can find it at my library, which I haven't been able to do so far because like, it's fine, but like, there's nothing spectacular about them. I like that this is a female-female relationship and the fact that this has not made a big deal about the fact that they're both females. And I liked seeing them grow closer to each other because it, you do see that throughout this first volume. But like at the same time, nothing crazy happened. It was kind of boring. They just kind of like went about their day and talked a lot about high school. But like, I don't know, like the, not a whole lot happened, you know? But like, it was still fine. Um, I didn't hate it. I liked having like a shorter manga to like break up some of the other books, but it was just generally okay. The next book and the last one for that little video um, was The Murder of Mr. Wickham and this is by Claudia Gray. I ended up giving this one four stars as well. This was great and also not what I expected at the same time. So going into this you expect it to be a murder mystery based on Jane Austen, which it is. But only like 25% of this book is the mystery. Uh, so this takes place at the home of Mr. Knightley and Emma, who are the main two characters in Emma by Jane Austen. And every single main couple, except for the couple from Northanger Abbey, is represented in this book. The daughter of that couple is represented in this book. So every book is represented, but like every main couple is at this house. And so like they basically are having this big, crazy... A couple week summer party kind of thing um, and so our main characters basically are Juliet who is the daughter of that couple and Jonathan Darcy who is yes you guessed it the son of Darcy and Lizzie um, and so like they're the youngest ones there and what happens is like Mr. Wickham just shows up and he somehow like knows everybody and is like connected to all of them in some way and like on the third day that he's there he shows up dead and so they're trying to figure out what's going on and so Juliet and Jonathan are the two youngest ones there and they don't really have any like stake in his death. I know Jonathan sounds like he would because he's Darcy's son but he he really doesn't and so they're trying to figure out who did it and this book is like I said about 25% mystery but most of this book is talking about the relationship between all of the main couples that you know had their happily ever after happy ending in the original Jane Austen novels and this author basically was like okay now what? Like, they've had their happily ever after, they've gotten married, that's not the end. There's going to be some more conflict between them. A lot of these couples do not align in personality, so there's some things that they, like, would fight about and some things that might separate them from each other. And so, like, what would those be? And she kind of, like, throws in a bunch of questions. So this is a lot about the couples. So I think you have to have read you don't have to, but you would enjoy this more if you've read all of Jane Austen's books because they do mention a bunch of side characters, but every time someone is mentioned, they are described in a way that like if you did not read any of Jane Austen's books, you would still know who they are and you wouldn't be confused by them. But I think you would get way more enjoyment out of this book if you had read all of Jane Austen's books. So if you're going in for a mystery, I mean, it is because it all kind of revolves around Wickham and his death, but like the actual solving of the mystery is like almost forgotten until the end. It was like the author was like, here's all these questions I want answered. Oh crap, also mystery. Okay, here's who did it. And like, it was very random. I mean, like I didn't hate this book, but it's not what I expected. I expected this to be much more of a murder mystery and it really wasn't. It was a lot more character development than I expected. I didn't hate it. Like, I still really enjoyed it because I like seeing a lot of the couples that I have come to love, like, the next step, like, what would it be? Um, and seeing them kind of interact now that they've been married for a hot second. But, yeah, it's, the, the, the title is misleading, in a sense, because, like, you expect it to be this big murder mystery, and it's really not. That's only, like, a, a minor part of it. But, 
still really enjoyed it, still gave it four stars. I just, I just think it's not quite what I expected. And like, I'm not upset by that. It's just like, be wary if you're going in. And that's it. Those are all of the books that I read in the month of July. I hope you enjoyed this. I kind of went really quickly because my light's going away. Also, it's raining and like thunder is just appearing. So I hope that this was enjoyable for you. As I mentioned, I didn't go into as much detail because I did do a couple of vlogs. So make sure you check those out. They'll be linked above and down below. Like I said, like 3,000 times in this video. But I hope that you guys enjoyed my wrap up. It was a very interesting month to say the least. But please let me know if you've read any of the books that I mentioned in today's video or what is your favorite book from July. But if you like this video, and I very much hope that you did, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you'd like to be part of this awesome growing family. I've also got all my social media down there as well as other fun bookish links, so don't forget to check all that out, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!